Thoroughbred Action is presented by Hardacre Farm. Welcome back to this Thursday edition of Thoroughbred Action here at Gulfstream Park. We have 11 races on tap and it's a beautiful afternoon here in South Florida. We'll take a look at these track and weather conditions. We start the afternoon with temperatures in the mid-60s, a sunny sky, a fast main track, and a firm turf course. First race of the afternoon over the main track at a mile and a 16th, it was a first finish line race. Scratch number six, Fenerbahce, a field of six. The favorite was number seven, Jaden's Best. Racing at Gulfstream. From the far outside, Jaden's best is sent hard to try to cross over, moving out the rail. That's Bama bound to show speed. These two get acquainted, but crossing over, the leader, Jaden's best, now by a length and a quarter. Legacy Dancer is in the two path. Bama bound in a bit tight toward the rail. Out three wide on the first turn is General Shema. He works a length and a half clear of Divine Sonnet, and Sir Sparky is last, about four lengths off the lead of Jaden's best. It's Jaden's best who made the killer crossover. He leads three parts of a length. From the outside and second is General Shema. Down inside, Bama bound third. From fourth, it's Legacy Dancer, Divine Sonnet, Park three wide, and the trailer is Sir Sparky. The opening quarter went in 24 and one, and down the back stretch they go. Up front, the leader, Jaden's best, three parts of a length. Divine Sonnet makes it all the way up to second now. Down at the inside, it's Bama bound. General Shema held up between horses. Second last is Legacy Dancer, two and a half lengths off the pace setter, and the trailer is Sir Sparky. They move inside half a mile from home, and up top, the leader, Jaden's best, in front to half length through the opening half mile and 49 flat. Up alongside Divine Sonnet, second, Bama Bound working a bit harder, third. Legacy Dansor is fourth, back fifth, and losing a bit of ground is General Shema, and trailing is Sir Sparky. That's the six of them with less than three furlongs to go. Up front, Jaden's best has been in front from the outset, and he leads it by a length and a quarter. Working hard second is Divine Sonnet, then Bama Bound and Legacy Dansor. Sir Sparky's out of last, now the trailer is General Shema, and Jaden's best is the one to beat. He enters the short stretch with a length and a half lead. Divine Sonnet is second, Bama Bound is third, then Legacy Dansor. Three sixteenths to go, Jaden's best asked to seal the deal, he leads it a length and a quarter. Divine Sonnet not going away, down at the inside it's Bama Bound to the wire. Jaden's best goes all the way. Bama Bound re-rallies for second ahead of Divine Sonnet third. Sir Sparky finished fourth ahead of Legacy Dansor, and then General Shema in 145 and three. Number seven, Jaden's best shoots right to the top and never looks back in today's first race under jockey Miguel Vasquez for trainer Jorge Navarro and AMG Equine. Number one, Bama Bound was second ahead of the four, Divine Sonnet, who ran third. To the second race we go at five furlongs over the turf. Claimers in for a price tag of 16,000. The field of eight, the betting favorite was number six, I will be free. And they're off. Last in, first out, two-step floor gets the first call, but I will be free, has the best first gear and puts ahead in front. Down at the inside, Phyllis Ann comes away to race in second, two-step floor out of their third. From between horses, that's Kikaru now fourth. It's easy to say back at the inside, fifth. At the rail goes Love Flute, third last, second last is Zyar Destiny, and Nurse John is last of all and about nine lengths off the lead of Phyllis Ann. Phyllis Ann with inside position and ahead in front. I will be free, is right back at her second. Two and a half lengths back to two-step floor gets a garden set up from third. Love Flute is in the hunt, racing from fourth. Three back to Keeker, then it's easy to say a Nurse John, and Zyar Destiny is last with a quarter of a mile to go. I will be free on the rebid to take the lead in the white blinkers. Phyllis Ann boxing on second over the top and two-step floor. Love Flute is fourth and looking for room. Inside the final furlong, up top, I will be free has the lead. Two-step floor to the attack on the outside, and two-step floor doing the better work. Two-step floor, and Nick Juarez will win it. I will be free second. Love Flute third, then Phyllis Ann, close after that involving, it's easy to say, and Keeker to complete the high five in 55 and two. Good run from a bit off the speed for the daughter of two-step salsa, two-step floor rallies for the score under jockey Nick Juarez for trainer Julia Carey and owner Michael Brigante. Six, I will be free game for second ahead of two Love Flute who ran third. We'll take a brief time out. We come back, there's plenty of great racing action left. Don't go away. We have to take care of these horses that you know give us so much joy. Being accredited by the TAA gives us instant credibility. People trust us even more than they have before because they know that the TAA has been to all of our location and that our horses are well cared for. 
I mean, this farm wouldn't look the way it is, these horses wouldn't look the way they are if it wasn't for the generosity and the hard work of the Thurbed Aftercare Alliance. They've united our whole industry in terms of the aftercare movement. We're all working together for the same purpose. Back now for the third race at six furlongs over the main track. $6,250 in claiming price here. Horses have not won three. The field of six, the betting favorites included the two, Gone Deep, and the five, Street Brilliant. And they're off. Sky Guy was off a step slow. From the inside, Gone Deep begins the best. Moving out the rail, here's Grand Lord to show speed. These two get acquainted and open three on Novalite, who's out of their third. Street Brent is from between horses, then mass approval. And after a sluggish getaway, the trailer is Sky Guy. He's about nine lengths off the lead as they head to the half-mile pole. It's Grand Lord and Edwin Soto in front past the half-mile, leads a half a length. On the outside, Gone Deep is there second. They've opened five on Novalite, who's trying to tighten in third. Stretch of another three to mass approval, then Street Brent. He has to go and has to go now to, tra to the trailer Sky Guy. The opening quarter was 22 and 3. Up front, Grand Lord holds a narrow lead. On the outside and gone deep from second, two and a half lengths. Novalite tacking on third. The rest need to really get going. Sky Guy is picking it up from fourth now. He splits horses as they pass the quarter mile pole. Grand Lord into the stretch with the lead. To the attack one more time. Gone deep from the back and Sky Guy. Street brilliant and on the inside, mass approval. Final furlong. It's Grand Lord trying to fend off the challenges. Gone Deep is next. Sky Guy ducking to the inside to try a late rally. It's Gone Deep to the front. Here's Sky Guy late. Gone Deep. Sky Guy. Photo finish. Gone Deep and Sky Guy heads apart on the wire in 112 and 2. Nice rally from well off the speed from number three, Sky Guy, who's along in the last jump to get the victory for owners Rockamo Mirage, Michael Bernard, and Don Weeby. The trainer is Alan Mirage, and in a peculiar circumstance, the jockey was the trainer, Alan Mirage, on board for the winning ride. Number two, Gone Deep was second ahead of the one Grand Lord who ran third. On to the fourth race we go now, a starter allowance contest on the turf in a mile and a 16th. A field of eight went to the gate. The favorite was number one, St. Louis. And they're off. Good start for Appa and a good start for Son of Oahu. They're the first two to begin. Away racing in third is Otto. Up on the outside goes Kid Jeter into the top flight. In between horses, Bowtie Affair. Then it's a length and a half to the team of St. Louis and Mystic Sky. And on hold at the back, the trailer is Bukaria as they move into the first turn. Up front with inside position and the lead, Son of Oahu. Three parts of a length to Appa second, Otto was third. St. Louis in very tight while racing in fourth. Tapping on the brakes between horses was Bowtie Affair, Kid Jeter's widest of all. Second last while three wide is Mystic Sky. And the trailer is Brew Carita as they straighten into the run for the back stretch. 23 and three for the opening quarter speed, Son of Oahu leads by a neck. In the two path, Appa second, Kid Jeter kept in the clear, three wide third. Otto was pocketed up racing in fourth now only about two lengths off the lead then it's back to the team of Bowtie Affair Mystic Sky and St. Louis and still nothing yet from Brew Carita Johnny V has him last of all and he's about five and a half off the lead through the opening half mile in 48 and one around the far turn they go up front son of Oahu and Jose Lescano they have the lead by a neck Appa is second kid Jeter is third Otto waiting for some place to go from fourth Mystic Sky circling horses and on the move fifth in between horses Bowtie Affair then St. Louis and Brew Carita, any one of the eight in with the chances they turn for home. Up front, son of Oahu, who's been in front from the outset, still has the lead. To the attack now on the outside, and Kid Jeter Auto looking for some place to go over the top. Brew Carita produced from last, and Brew Carita is in full stride for John Velasquez and runs by them all. Here's Brew Carita taking charge and moving away. Brew Carita wins on the wire by almost two. Mystic Sky second, close after that. Auto's involved with Bowtie Affair and Kid Jeter at 141 and 2. From last to first to win for number two, Brew Carita, who circles the field and kicks on past the eighth pole under jockey John Velasquez for owner Edith Dixon and trainer Michael Matz. Number eight, Mystic Sky at a big price for second, ahead of number five, Appa, who was another nice price and got a free third. Fifth race now, seven furlongs over the main track, claimers which have not won three and for a price tag of $6,250. These are fillies and mares. Scratch the three and eight. Miguel Vasquez on the six, Miss Steffi, seven went postward. The favorite was the nine, class dropper Venezuelan beauty. And they're off.
From the outside, Venezuelan Beauty bounces away nicely. Here's Palmera moving up the challenge, so the favorites will land 1-2 as they run out of the one-mile chute. Miss Regalite is away racing in third, two better than Miss Steffi in fourth, then back to Diana's Comprise. The two at the back are Sensational Saturday and Street Princess. Down the back stretch they go, and up front, Venezuelan Beauty leads a half a length. Miss Regalite is a bit closer second. Palmera is now back to third. Miss Steffi is fourth, two and a half lengths off the pace setter, working the same margin clear of Diana's Comprise then Street Princess and Sensational Saturday. The opening quarter was just 23 and two. Around the far turn they go. It's the class dropping favorite, Venezuelan Beauty with the lead. Palmera second, Miss Regal Light third, Miss Steffi fourth. Stretch of three to Diana's comprise in fifth, then Street Princess and Sensational Saturday is last of the lot with five sixteenths to go. Venezuelan Beauty starts to get away. She leads it now by three. Palmera all in second. Stretch of four to the inside and racing third, Miss Steffi. On the outside in Miss Regal Light, Street Princess is underway and so is Sensational Saturday as they turn for the money. Venezuelan Beauty sets sail for home on a five-length lead now. Palmera can only watch and wonder from second, then Miss Steffi, Street Princess, and Sensational Saturday, but this one's over. It's all Venezuelan Beauty in today's fifth race. Venezuelan Beauty and Jose Ortiz wrapped up in six on top. Palmera second, Diana's comprised third, then Sensational Saturday, and Miss Steffi to complete the high five in 124 and one. Favorite gets the job done. In fact, she makes short work of it in race number five today. Venezuelan Beauty well clear at the wire under jockey Jose Ortiz for trainer Fernando Abreu and under Julian Demora. Four Palmera for second ahead of five Diana's Comprise, who ran third. Early pick four, $249.80. The early pick five, $456.90. $8.35 for a 50 or four five 50 cent return. We'll take a brief time out. When we come back, we'll bring you the Rainbow Six sequence on the Thursday from South Florida right after this. A passion for horses and a commitment to breed champions is the foundation of Hardacre Farm. Founded in 1999 by Amy Tarrant, owner, breeder, and trainer, Hardacre Farm, now based in Ocala, continues its tradition of success. From the Breeders' Cup to Gulfstream Park, Hardacre Farm from the breeding shed to the racetrack in pursuit of producing the best. Back now for race number six on the card. It was the start of today's Rainbow Six sequence. We kicked it off on the turf at a mile and a 16th. Claimers in for a price tag of 30,000. They've not won two. A field of seven, the betting favorites were six, Cinder and eight, Stella Street. And they're off. From the inside, Intractable begins nicely alongside Kinetra in the early stages. Down at the inside, Kate Miss comes away in the top flight. She'll land third behind the speed. Away racing in fourth is Stella Street. Then in between horses, Magician's Vanity. Cinder is on hold second last. And two and a half to the trailer, Miss Dude. Under the wire the first time and running into the first turn. Intractable and Luis Saez have the lead by a half a length. And the two-path Kinetra tracks the leader while second Cape Mist is now third. Behind the speed fourth is Stella Street. She's racing two lengths off the lead. Cinders to her inside, then Magician's Vanity, who's a bit keen, while second last and Miss Dude trails about four and a half from front to back as they run into the back stretch. The opening quarter was covered in 24 and 4. And up front, Intractable leads narrowly. In the two path, racing second, Kinitra. From third is Cape Mist. From fourth, it's Stella Street. Then Cinder, inching closer a bit now, only three lengths off the lead. Magician's Vanity is ducking to the inside to race a joint last. And getting started on the outside is Miss Dude. Miss Dude has moved up two spots with half a mile to go. Intractable and Luis Saez have been in front from the outset, and they move into the far turn with the neck advantage through the opening half mile in 50 and 1. Alongside the leader, second is Kinitra. Down inside, Cape Miss needs room third. Stella Street's on her outside, then back to the inside, Cinder. Miss Dude's rally has stalled. She's second last, and Magician's Vanity trails as they turn for home. Intractable cuts the corner and maintains a narrow lead. Looking for room, Cape Miss ducks to the rail to try to secure position. Down the center and Stella Street on the far outside at Cinder. Wide open, eighth of a mile to go. Cape Mist got through on the inside and takes the lead. Stella Street surfacing laden on the outside at Cinder, but Cape Missed will prevail. Second, Stella Street. Third, Cinder. Then, Kinetra and Magician's Vanity to complete the high five in 142 and four. Ground saving trip from number one, Cape Missed. Jose Ortiz secures racing room past the furlong grounds and gets the score for trainer Jane Sabelli and owners of Wasabi Ventures and Kenwood Racing. Number eight, Stella Street was second ahead of the sixth, Cinder, who had to settle for third. 
Seventh race now, the start of the lead pick five, five and a half furlongs over the main track. Main and claimers three and up in for a $12,500 price tag. Congrats to one Fiore, the three member, and the eight overdriven cat. Eight to the gate, the favorite was the six, I'm thirsty. And they're off. Picture perfect beginning, they all broke as one. Toward the inside, Poopsie Doopsie gets the first call. Pota's on the far outside. I'm thirsty between horses. These are the top three. Alan behind them, Grand Edge and Deborah's Dance, working two lengths better than the team of Lady Greatness and the Blonde down toward the inside. The early trailer is Ruby Lyon. She's about five and a half off the lead as they round the far turn. From between horses, I'm thirsty, and Manny Jimenez have the lead now by a neck. Poopsie Doopsie right back at her from second. Pota's now third. Deborah's Dance is fourth. Back fifth and check for racing room is Grand Grand Edge. It's a stretch of another two and a half to Lady Greatness around her and moving up is the Blonde. And Ruby Lyon is still last with a quarter of a mile to go. I'm Thirsty maintains the lead. Well, she's out well out from the inner rail. Poopsie Doopsie hugs the rail and tries to fight back. Then Deborah's Dance and Poto with three sixteenths to go. I'm Thirsty for a short lead. Poopsie Doopsie toward the rail is second from between horses. Deborah's Dance then Grand Edge and Lady Greatness. Final furlong. It's I'm Thirsty getting away. I'm Thirsty. Fill her up. She wins it by two and a half. Second, Deborah's Dance. Third, Poopsie Doopsie. Then Grand Edge. And along for fifth was the Blonde in 106 flat. Three-year-olds against older horses is always a risky proposition to this time of year, but in this particular contest, it was no problem as three-year-olds ran one, two, three with the favorite I'm Thirsty getting the job done at odds on under apprentice rider Manny Jimenez for owners Joker Racing and trainer Jorge Navarro. Jorge Navarro with his second winner today. Seven, Deborah's Dance second ahead of the four, Poopsie Doopsie. And third. To the eighth race now, the start of the late pick four on the turf at seven and a half furlongs. Scratch the alternates 13, 14, 15, and 16. Rider change on nine, Prosperity Mo to Jose Bautista. 12 went to the gate. This was a wide open betting race. And they're off. Good start for Arpanella from the outside. Far outside, Fact Check is trying to get over, and so is Oscarific. So the outside trio trying to work to the inside ahead of Shamcat, who comes away racing in fourth. Then down along the inside, and now racing from fifth, Tempestuous Angel, about four lengths off the lead. Racing on his outside goes Union Riches, situated in, indeed only about four lengths off the lead. At the rail follows El Cheval ahead of Prosperity Mo, then back to Cape Apache, and on the inside, Moreno Mojo. The two at the back include Coyote quick step and at the back the trailer is Oscarific. They run down the back stretch. Up top, the leader at two to one is Fact Check and Luis Saez a half a length in front, Arpanella second, Oscarific third. From fourth at Sham Cat, then Union Rich is in fifth. Down at the inside of Tempestuous Angel. Stretch of three and a half to El Cheval, then Prosperity Mo and Moreno Mojo. Moving up from the back is San Filippo, drawn with an eight or nine lengths of the lead, working four better than Coyote Quick Step and Cape Apache drops off the trail to the opening half mile in 48 and two. Up front, Fact Check has the lead and he has it by a length and a half. Arpanella working hard to try to keep pace. In between horses, here's a run from Shamcat to try to get to the leader. On the outside in Union Riches as they turn in. Fact Check opens a three length lead now. Shamcat is second, Union Riches is third, then Tempestuous Angel, Moreno Mojo, and Oscar Riffick. To the wire, Fact Check is strong up front. Fact Check kept the business by Luis Saez. Fact Check. In front, Shamcat second, close for third, maybe Union Riches over Moreno Mojo in 129-3. and three. Post 12, no problem for number 12, Fact Check, who crosses over from that high draw and leads every step of the way. Under jockey Luis Saez for trainer Todd Pletcher and Eclipse Thoroughbred Partners. Four, Shamcat was second ahead of the five, Union Riches, who ran third. To the ninth race now on the start of the late pick three. We stay on the turf, we move to one mile. Claimers in for a price tag of $25,000 or a starter allowance contest. Scratch number 10, DeRocher. Rider change on 13, Albert Charles to Jose Lescano. A field of 12 went postward. The favorite was number four, Erasmo's Dream. And they're off. Good start toward the outside for Classic Move, who's heading off for the year of the lead. Don't come knocking away with speed, so is Giant's voice. And up on the outside, here's Francesco Flyer moving closer. He'll be stuck three wide in the run of the first turn. 
Giants Voice puts ahead in front of Classic Move, who's racing in second. From the outside and dropping over to be third is Francesco Flyer. Don't come knocking his fourth, a stretch of two and a half lengths to prize fight. Well settled, mid-flight fifth. Working a length and a half better than an improving run from on the inside, Gray Dude. Racing up on his outside is the, the drawing in horse, Albert Charles. He's racing about six lengths off the lead. Out three wide down the back stretch is Wild Scat Blue. Sir Sebastian is toward the rail. Racing next on the inside is uh, Sir Ray. He's about nine lengths off the pace setter. Erasmo's dream between horses. And at the back, the trailer, Major Key. The opening quarter went in a sharp 22 and two. There's less than half a mile to go. Classic move, taking it to Giant's Voice through a 46 and four half mile off the speed third while three wide is francesco flyer down at the inside don't come knocking fourth only two lengths behind racing on his outside goes prize fight then trying to run on from the back is uh, albert charles in between horses and trying to kickstart a rally gray dude out wide on the course is sir ray with wild scat blue as they run to the top of the stretch look at them line up and stack up many chances here as they line up for home off cover here's a run now coming into the center from francesco flyer immediately swallowed up by prize fight who's immediately hit by sir sebastian sir sebastian now surges to the lead up into second and closing good ground is erasmo's dream then on the inside it's prize fight the winner is sir sebastian erasmo's dream second third prize fight close after that in 134 and two good trip and a strong stretch kick from the son of discreet cat number two sir sebastian kicks on with it under jockey paco lopez for owners establo g and g and trainer marcio navarro Number four, Rasmo's Dream came out of the pack to get up for second ahead of the 11 prize fight. And a nice price, he settled for third. Don't go away, we'll take a brief time out. When we come back, the Thursday feature race, sprinters at seven furlongs right after this. Crossing the finish line for the last time can mean an uncertain future for many horses. Recognizing the need for a dignified retirement, the racing industry has made racehorse aftercare a top priority. In partnership with Gulfstream Park and the Florida Horsemen's Association, Florida Track provides retraining and adoption services for retired racehorses. Thanks to their efforts, the end of a racing career can signal the beginning of a new career. In show jumping, trail riding, police work, even therapy for children and veterans. However, good intentions do not come without cost. As a nonprofit organization, Florida Track relies on tax-deductible donations and volunteers to help pay for feed, training, housing, and veterinary care. To find out how you can help, contact Florida Track today. Your support will go a long way towards a new beginning. Back now for race number 10. It was the Thursday feature at seven furlongs, an allowance optional claiming event with a field of seven. Very nice field assembled for this race. The favorite was number seven, Shaft of Light. And they're up. From the outside, Shaft of Light begins nicely. Moving in the center, Riker is showing speed. Down at the inside here is Easy to Say up to take over. Easy to Say leads as they run out of the chute. Shaft of Light is right back at him from second, then Riker in third. The Argentine import Milo Milo is now racing in fourth, a length better than El Kabir in fifth. Outside and piloting from sixth, and Donegal Moon is seventh and last, and six lengths off the lead of Shaft of Light. Shaft of Light now works clear to lead it by a length and three quarters. Into second goes Easy to Say. Milo Milo is now third past the half mile pole. Riker is fourth. El Kabir is fifth. Piloting is sixth and Donegal Moon is seventh and last as they round the far turn. No change in the plot through the opening quarter in 22 and two. Shaft of Light has it by a length and a half. Tightening in second is easy to say. These top two have opened four on third running Milo Milo. Then Riker and El Kabir still second last is Donegal Moon and piloting is last as they move to the top of the stretch. Easy to say is a bit closer at Shaft of Light with a quarter of a mile to go. These two well clear of the other's 
led by Il Kabir and Milo Milo. Donegal Moon tries to put in a run from the back and they're into the stretch. Up top, it's still Shaft of Light with a two-length lead. Easy to say is flat to the boards and not gaining. El Kabir starts to rally on the outside now, third, then Donegal Moon. Final furlong, Shaft of Light kept the business and he's two in front. El Kabir is running out of time. It will be Shaft of Light, two it, three parts of a length. El Kabir second, third, easy to say, fourth, Donegal Moon. Close after that, Riker or Milo Milo in 122 and one. Number seven, Shaft of Light, had to deal with some speed rivals early on. He put those rivals away and held off the stretch close of number three, El Kaber, for the victory, giving trainer Jorge Navarro his third winner of the afternoon. Amisa El Jaramillo on board for the winning ride for Monster Racing Stable. The very classy El Kaber came on to be second ahead of the two, easy to say, who tried the winner but had to settle for third. To the 11th and final race now, seven and a half furlongs over the turf, made in claimers in for a price tag of $20,000. Scratch the 10, Darmotivo. Scratch the 13, Mandeville. Rider change on 12, Venezuelan treasure to Miguel Vasquez. In field of 11, favorites were five, Blame the Law, and seven, Miss B on Betty Ray. And runners away. Blame the Law was off a step slow. Good start from the rail for Little Queen, who's heading off for the year of the lead. Running up on heels behind her, Gem Digger wants to be part of the party. Stacking across the course with Miss B on Deddy Ray, three wide. Four wide was Quack Quack. And then in the two path, races Misty Spirit. As they round the first turn, Little Queen leads Misty Spirit by a length. Down at the inside, Jeb Digger is third. Miss Biondetti Ray races from fourth, and down at the rail goes She Can't Wrestle, fifth and a bit keen. Stretch of two and a half lengths back to Quack Quack with looking cozy to her inside. Racing three wide, now ducking over to the two path is Kabuki, about seven lengths off the lead. And the three at the back are Lancaster, Venezuelan Treasure, and Blame the Law. The opening quarter was covered in just 24 and three. Leisurely tempo being set by Little Queen, who has the lead. Injecting more pace into the race while working into the two path. Here's Gem Digger to take a shot. She Can't Wrestle follows the top flight. Up on the outside in Misty Spirit. Miss Beyond Deddy Ray is now fifth. Trying to run on from there as inside running, looking cozy. Here's Blame the Law circling three wide on the outside. Meanwhile, Lancaster catches the eye. She'll need room bad, but she does have horse under Paco Lopez as they run to the top of the stretch. Taking over the lead. Misty Spirit moves away from Little Queen. Still trying to find racetrack is Lancaster. Miss Biondetti Ray down the stand side. Far outside and coming on is Co looking cozy. Final furlong. Lancaster's loose and trying to get to Miss Biondetti Ray. Miss Biondetti Ray has the lead. Lancaster's up into second, and that's as far as she'll go. Miss Biondetti Ray wins. Lancaster's second. Up third, looking cozy. Then she can't wrestle. And Misty Spirit in 130 and four. Nice performance from a stalking role for number seven, Miss Beyond Deddy Ray, who kicks on for the score. Under jockey Roberto Alvarado Jr. for trainer Henry Calazzo and four horsemen racing stable and Henco Incorporated. Number nine, Lancaster shook loose to get second. Out of the three, looking cozy, who ran third. Four, she can't wrestle, completes the super. We will have a high five carryover tomorrow of more than $2,000. Pick five got hit for $343.65 for a 50 cent return. We did have plenty of winning wagers in the Rainbow Six. 20 cent return is $598.40. Triggers a healthy carryover into the Friday card of $612,325.88. That's a wrap for us on this Thursday edition of Thoroughbred Action here at Gulfstream Park. We'll see you back tomorrow with a 12.35 p.m. post and 11 more races. Hit the hay. Hit the hay. I've been working all day. Tell you, Jack, I'm so tired.